No. <coughs> Ms. Mitchell? Um, as you may have discerned during the course of our meetings on this case, I don't know a whole lot about computers, and I have to say um, it. It would be better to just ask about it. Um, I'm going to ask you to try and help me go through what we've heard is on the direct and cross-examination over the last few days. So let's start with um, this question about the alteration or the potential alteration of dates and times. Um, it's your understanding at some point during the course of December 17th, 1998, it appears as though this computer was turned on, correct? Correct. And it was done so without the right block software package being employed? Correct. And that's something that you wouldn't do, correct? Correct. And, um, and, and tell the jury what happens when you turn on the computer like that. When you turn on a computer, the operating system um, can create new files and update existing files. Now, let's talk about that concept of files for a minute. Because um, I'm just, is there a difference between files and just information, all that information that you were able to pull off that computer uh, when you employed the, N the NK software package? What is the difference between a file or information contained in a file and the information you were able to recover from the uh, computer when you employed the NK software package? Can you understand that question? I'm not sure I understand what you're saying. Okay. No, I'm not sure. Well, let's talk about the difference between internet history and internet files. Okay. If you were to have turned on that computer, uh, just fired up, booted up, turned it on, um, would you have been able to see all of the internet history that you've testified to about, uh, uh, in this case, the last several days? No. Um, would you have been able to see all the internet files that you've testified about um, during the course of this uh, case? Yes. Okay. So when the computer was turned on, the internet files were still on the computer and were still intact? Correct. But the internet history was not? Correct. Now, can you explain to me, in which case I'm sure the entire jury will understand, uh, but explain to me how it is that all the internet files are still on the, on the computer when you turn it on, or if you were to turn it on, but not all the internet history? The internet history was being deleted, but the internet files were not. The, the, the internet files were housed in the temporary internet files folder, and those were intact. They were not being deleted. Now, was all of the internet history being deleted, or just some of the internet history? Or could you tell? Um, most of the internet history was deleted. Now, when you say it was being deleted, was it just automatically deleted, or did it appear, or can you discern, based upon your examination of the computer and the hard drive and your software analysis, was it being intentionally deleted by a user? Yes, it was being intentionally deleted. Now, defense counsel have been asking you some questions about what a person intent upon framing somebody for, uh, who was intent on committing suicide and framing somebody else for murder would do on a computer. Do you remember that? Yes. Um, do you suppose that somebody who was intent upon committing suicide and framing somebody else for murder would work to delete all of the files that indicated uh, searching for poison on the computer? I guess that would defeat the purpose. Now, tell me something else. Um, as I recall, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, during cross-examination at some point, you were asked something like, well, by turning the computer on December 17th, 1998, that altered all the data that you recovered from the computer. Um, did turning on the computer, first of all, you were asked that question or something like that? Um, I believe so. Okay. I checked because I don't believe that question was asked. I'm sure that Mr. Albee would have asked it better than I did, but it was something like that or not? Um, well, <laughs> Why don't you just ask a question and then whether it's asked or not, Mr. Albee? Okay, well, tell me this. 
turning on the computer on December 17, 1998, did that alter all the data that, and, and dates and times that you recovered from the computer? No. Um, now, you've talked about data that you recovered from unallocated space. Is that correct? Correct. Was any of the data that you actually recovered from unallocated space altered in any way, shape, or form by turning on the computer on December 17, 1998? No. So, and, and now the data that you recovered from unallocated space was the internet history, is that correct? Most of the internet history was recovered, yes. And it was recovered from unallocated space? Correct. Was there any part of the internet history that was recovered from allocated space? I believe um, a small portion. <clears throat> were any of the emails that you recovered between Mark Jensen and Kelly Labonte, were any of them recovered from allocated space? No. So they were all recovered from unallocated space? Correct. And what does that tell you in terms of <coughs> what the user did after reading that email. The emails were deleted. And the fact that all of the history regarding poisoning and botulism and antifreeze and paroxetine and everything else that you recovered from that computer from unallocated space, the fact that it was recovered from unallocated space, what does that tell you about the what the user did with that information after they read it? The internet history was deleted. Now, in 1998, when you were utilizing that particular computer, if you wanted to delete the history, delete what you were reading from the computer, what would be the steps normally that a user would need to take to delete whatever it was they were reading from the computer? You would have to go into the internet options and click on a tab or a button called delete history. And then you'd have to press delete history? Now, I'm going to direct your attention to States Exhibit 89 just so that I make sure that I understand the implications of what you're talking about here. We'll go to page two. Um, and on Wednesday, October 14, 1998, uh, at 1120 colon 14 p.m., what was it that was pulled up? That would have been the Windstar Cruises CD-ROM order form. No. And this was recovered from unallocated space in the computer, correct? Um, I would have to look at the index.dat files to determine that. Do you have the index.dat files with you? Not, a, was, not with is, me, you haven't. Is this this item just described as index number two? Is that the index.dat files? No, just index.dat. Oh, D86. Says, let me show you this. Here. Oh, that is. Okay, well, here. Let's take a look at that. Is that? I'm, um, this needs to be marked, I guess, as an exhibit. This is from the earlier hearing. Put, put the exhibit sticker on, on top, like up here. Don't put it right over that. Yes. <coughs> I show you this item has been marked as Exhibit S one ten council. Your Honor, did you want to see this first before I show it to the board? Yeah, I just see it for a second. Hmm. 
Now, I show you this item that has been marked as uh, Exhibit S110. Look it over. Now, can you tell me what that is? It's the index.dat files retrieved and recovered from the Jensen home computer. Now, um, so I don't know what that is. So what does that mean, this index.dat file that was recovered from the Jensen home computer? The index.dat files hold the internet history. The index.dat files hold the internet history. They hold the internet history that was recovered from the unallocated space or from the allocated space or all of it? All of it. Now, by looking at the index.dat file, can you tell which portions of the index of the internet history were deleted and which portions were not deleted? Yes. No. And can you see on the index.dat file where this uh, October 14th, 1998, 11.20 colon 14 p.m. Uh, CD-ROM order form comes up, or does it come up? No, actually the PowerPoint slides were taken from the internet files, which were from the temporary internet files folder. Okay, so this is not from the internet history, this is from the internet files. Correct. I misspoke before when you asked that question. Okay. Now, and the internet files were still intact when you, if, when you examined this computer, correct? Correct. Even without NCASE, if you had just turned on the computer without any, uh, without this NCASE software package, you could have recovered the internet files? You could have seen um, what was located in the temporary internet files folder, yes. So this item was in the temporary internet file? This uh, item, and I should, should say what item I'm talking about. The um, Wednesday, October 14th, 1998, 11 20 14 p.m. CDR, CD ROM uh, on Windstar Cruises. Correct. Now, when you turned, or when somebody turned the computer on on December 17th, 1998, did that in any way alter the time that's reflected in this internet file? that this CD-ROM had been accessed November, uh, I'm sorry, October 14, 1998, at 11.20.14 p.m.? No. So that date and time remains accurate, even though the computer was turned on on December 17, 1998? Yes. Then, let's turn to page four, and we're on Thursday, October 15, 1998, 11 colon 54 colon 46 p.m. And there's a search for underground. Now, is that from the internet file or from the internet history? The entire, entire PowerPoint is from the internet files. All the slides are from the internet files. So this also would have remained among the internet files? Correct. So the information regarding, oh, let's see, we'll go to, <coughs> all these sites relating to underground, which are on pages five, six, seven, Eight, as it relates to the underground, they were all out of the internet files, not out of the internet history. Correct. And, not, and so the internet files were still intact when the computer was turned, if the computer had been turned out without the use of the NK software package. Correct. Now, Then turning to let's see where I'll get to. <clears throat> page one thirty seven. You go that takes a long time to get rid of the 
right to the very end here. December 2nd, 1998, 11.18, 56 p.m. Well, actually, let's go before that. So let's not go that far. Let's go to this back here. Okay, let's go to Wednesday, December second, nineteen ninety-eight. This will be page ninety-seven. Um, Wednesday, December second, nineteen ninety-eight, two thirty-four a.m. Now this was off the inner. I'm sorry. What? Okay, it's page ninety-seven, Wednesday, December second, nineteen ninety-eight, two thirty-four, twenty-four a.m. And um, the next page on that was says RX list, the Internet Drug Index, correct? Correct. Now that was off the Internet. <laughs> Files. Correct. Now on December 2nd, looking at the index.dat file, I see on December 2nd, 1998, there was a file lap created uh, at 2.31.04 a.m. and last written at 2.34.14 a.m. Is that correct? That's correct. <coughs> and does that file show up on the internet? His, uh, the internet, um, this internet file here, the, on, on exhibit 90, uh, on, on page 97, page 98, is that what's showing up here? in the internet file? I'm not sure what you're asking me. Well, what I'm trying to figure out what was deleted, since here we see that on 2.34.24 a.m. something was, um, it's, it's located, it's part of the internet file. And looking at the index.dat file for December 2nd, 1998, at 2.31 a.m., there was a file created, and then at 2.34.14 a.m., 10 seconds before this, in the file it was open, um, it was last written. Um, okay, the internet, the, the internet history, which is represented by the index.dat file, that specific dat file um, that was created at 231 and last written at 234 was deleted. This particular website that we're looking at that is showing a time of 234 may have been housed in that index.dat file, yes. But then whoever had access, whichever user had access, had ac um, accessed that site had deleted it? They would have deleted the history as a whole. As a whole, it might not have been specifically one site. You mean just past the clear history? Correct. After a series of um, do it at any time. I'm trying to figure out what was deleted from the internet history that you were able to recover off unallocated space. Now, what were you able to recover off of unallocated space off the computer using the NK software package from December 2nd, 1990? <coughs> Most of the information in Exhibit 90 came from recovered information, which is the internet history itself. Okay, so go to exhibit 90. So if we go to the internet history, do you have that exhibit in front of you now? Yes. 
and we go to December 2nd, 1998 at 2.31.04 a.m. And that's going to be on page 21, is that correct? Correct. And what is the site that you see at 2.31.04 a.m.? Um, it's a Yahoo site. Oh, excuse me. It's um, 2.31.04 a.m. is a an image from a Holiday 98 HP shop. 2.31.05 shows the Yahoo site, the host site. Now, the next thing that we have on the Internet History is Wednesday, December 2nd, 1990, at 2.34, 24 a.m. And looking at the Internet, I, I'm sorry, from the Internet file, and looking at the Internet History, between 2.31 a.m. and 2.34 a.m., can you tell the jury what you can see as to what was accessed? It would be a site www.rxlist.com. And that was accessed at 2.34, colon 23 a.m. Correct. Which is reflected on page 97 here as um, rxlist.html, <laughs> correct? Correct. <laughs> and then at 12... 1998 at 2.34.23 a.m. also, it says cookie buddy at doubleclick.net. Can you tell the jury what that means or what that is, if you know? That would be the third party cookie that Mr. Albee was referring to earlier during his cross examination. <clears throat> so explain to me what a third party cookie is. It's a tracking. Um, it's a tracking device that the internet or that um, certain web pages uh, might use to follow your interests on the internet. Okay, that's what the doubleclick.net is? Yes. But you can tell by, can you tell by looking at this whether or not somebody using the Jensen home computer on December 2nd, 1998 at 234 colon 24 or 23 a.m. <clears throat> accessed the internet and looked anything up? They did access the internet at that specific time, yes. And what did they look up? Well, they were looking at the rxlist.com site. Um, and then looking at page 99 on the internet files, as reflected in exhibit 89, page 99 of exhibit 89, um, they go to a, they're searching for Paxil, and they bring up the generic term paroxetine, is that correct? What page are you on? Page 99. 99? Yes. Correct. Through the rxlist.com site. No. Was that, does that tell you whether or not there was somebody on the Jensen home computer looking up the term Paxil and then the term paroxetine? Yes. So there wasn't somebody from some other site. This was the Jensen home computer that was being utilized to access these sites. Oh, definitely, yes. And that was at 2.34, colon, 40 a.m., correct? Correct. And that's according to the internet file. Correct. Now between 2.34, 24 a.m., where there's a search for drugs in the internet file, and 2.34.40 a.m., where the search is narrowed down to Paxil, <coughs> there are numerous entries in the internet history. Is that true? 
True. And let's go through them one by one. First of all, 2.34.25 a.m., there's this doubleclick.net rx.com homepage. Now, is that another one of those third-party sites that Defense Council is referring to? It's an ad, yes. Okay. Um, and then at 2.34 colon 28, uh, there's rxlist.com rxgif. Do you know what that is? A GIF is an image, picture, file. So that was an item that was on the internet history, but it's not on the internet file. Can you tell us why that is? It's part of that internet page. And then the next two entries are double clicks again. Correct. And are those more of those ads that council was referring to? Um, appears to be a banner and a, lo a banner logo, a button picture. Which would all be contained within that site, that same site. So all of these items that were that were in that were in the internet history, but are not on the internet file. And why were they on the internet history, but they're not on the internet file? Well, they might be on the internet file. It's just um, we might not be able to see a specific picture. Let's see up there. You can see the placeholder where there's a square, a small red X. I see. Indicates that there was an image there. Possibly, or a banner, or a logo. Okay. Now, directing your attention to page 100 of the of exhibit S89, where it indicates Wednesday, December 2nd, 1998, 2.35 a.m., and a paroxetine site is accessed. Is that correct? That's correct. No. There's nothing about turning on the computer on December 17th, 1998, that would alter the time uh, or the date that this site was accessed at the time that you recovered it, correct? Correct. So the date and time reflected in this exhibit accurately reflects the date and time that was reflected on the computer, uh, reflecting the time this, this site was accessed on the Jensen Home computer, correct? Correct. Now, jumping forward to page 101, Wednesday, December 2nd, 1998, at 6.16, colon, 50 a.m., on exhibit S89, page 101, there's a reflection of a site being accessed at 6.16, colon, 50 a.m., correct? Correct. And on page 102, we see that that site relates to ethylene glycol poisoning, correct? Correct. And that was part of the internet file, correct? Correct. And looking at the internet history, At 616, let's see. Well, looking at the internet history for December 2nd, 1998 at 616 a.m., it jumps from 616 colon 44 a.m. to 617 a.m., correct? So the, uh, <coughs> the internet history reflects on December 2nd, 1998 at 6 colon 16 colon 44 a.m. <coughs> There was a site accessed, and it's entitled, um, it's a Yahoo site, and it's a query. And what is the query? There was a query done for ethylene glycol poisoning. And the response that is recovered on page 102 or is dumb reflected on the internet files uh, as exhibited in 
Exhibit S89 on page 102. Well, I object. I call for speculation. Uh, well, well, if I she knows. Know because, I, pardon me? Pardon me? I didn't hear what you said. Oof. I heard the objection. I thought you said something. Else. Uh, oh, oh, I didn't know who you were talking to, Judge. If you're talking, he, he made an objection that it was speculation, and then I thought I heard you say something. Yeah, if she knows, if, huh? she, if she knows, I oh, said. Oh, okay, okay. Um, <coughs> yeah, the objection's overruled. Excuse me. So, well, was there an answer? I don't think there was. Uh, do you know the answer? Could you repeat the question? <laughs> You mean I put in all that work? <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, on December 2nd, 1998, at 6 colon 16 44 a.m., you indicate there's a Yahoo inquiry regarding ethylene glycol poisoning, correct? Correct. And does the response, is it the response to that inquiry which shows up on page 102 of the internet file as exhibited in exhibit, in exhibit S89? Um, it's certainly possible that that was in direct relation. I mean, it's six seconds later. It could be in direct relation to the query that was done on ethylene glycol poisoning. But you're not sure? I don't see the, we don't have an internet file for the actual query. No. The fact that somebody turned the computer on on December 17th, 1998 would not affect the accuracy of this information which you recovered from the computer from the computer internet file indicating that on Wednesday, December 2nd, 1998 at 6 colon 16 colon 50 a.m. somebody was trying to find out some of ethylene glycol poisoning on Yahoo on the Jensen home computer. That would not affect the date and time on this particular information, no. Now, directing your attention to the bottom page 102, where it reflects Wednesday, December 2nd, 1998, 6 colon 17 colon 24 a.m. And then on page 103, it reflects the site that was recovered was oxalic acid. Correct. Now, that's, that's from the internet file? Uh, it's from the internet files on the home computer? Well, I have that same time and date on the internet history. So it would reflect on both. So it's on both the internet history and on the internet files? To the second. And, um, So, and that reads, <coughs> oxalic acid is a two-carbon molecule in which both of the carbons are carbon Judge, carboxyl. I object. This is, this is beyond the scope of cross. It's cumulative, and it's about issues on which there's no dispute. Um, the objections are ruled. Oxalic acid is a two-carbon molecule in which both of the carbons are carboxyl groups. It is the metabolite of ethylene glycol, a component of antifreeze in, component of antifreeze. In solution, it is not harmful to a person, but unfortunately, it easily crystallizes in the kidneys as it is concentrated for excretion. High doses of ethanol, parent booze parent, are given in cases of ethylene glycol poisoning to act as a competitive inhibitor of the enzyme alcohol dehydrogenase. The non-oxidized ethylene glycol can then be harmlessly passed by the kidneys. Judge, I'd like an instruction about the... Uh, again, folks, uh, this is being admitted to show what could have been read by a person who was looking at the display when this material was being transmitted to it. It uh, is not to be accepted by you as proving what is asserted in the content. Any question about that? Okay, thank you. But this was a site that was accessed on Wednesday, December 2nd, 1998 at 6 colon 17 colon 24 a.m. on the Jensen Home computer, is that correct? Objection leading. Uh, well, uh, 
I think that the witness is capable of answering yes or no without being uh, led. Uh, it, it, well, you know, I'll withdraw the question, Your Honor. Um, this site, um, Ms. Mitchell, was accessed at what date and at what time on the Jensen Home computer? This specific site was accessed at 6.17, seconds a.m. on December 2nd, 1998. And there's nothing about turning the computer on on December 17th, 1998 that would alter that date and time. Objection leading. Well, I'll put it a different way. Is there anything about turning the computer on on December 17th, 1998 that would alter the date or time that was reflected here on this exhibit at page 102? No. So that is an accurate date and time. Objection leading. Well, um, the witness is capable of answering yes or no. I don't think that the answer is being suggested. The objection is overruled. So is that an accurate date and time? According to my findings, yes. Then directing your attention to the bottom page 103 of Exhibit S89, the Internet Files. What site is accessed at 617 colon 52 a.m.? Um, it's a site, a toxicology site on Popeyesol, which is, I believe, an antidote or form of treatment for ethylene glycol poisoning. And there's nothing, is there anything about turning the computer on on December 17th, 1998 that would alter the accuracy of this time as reflected in the internet file of this site being accessed at 6.17 colon 52 a.m.? No. And then, 16 seconds later, at 6.18.08 a.m., what site is accessed? Um, again, it's a, a toxicology site um, titled Toxic Alcohols. So a site that describes a potential antidote for ethylene glycol poisoning is on the screen for no more than 16 seconds. Section leading. Uh, the objection is sustained. Well, could this site have been on the screen for more than 16 seconds? Uh, not at this particular date and time. Uh, could it have been on the site for less than 16 seconds? Sure. Yes. And then at 6.18.08 a.m., Eight, sec eight seconds past 6.18 a.m., what site is accessed? The toxic alcohol site. <coughs> and that site, and well, and how, how much longer is it before the next site is accessed? Approximately 12 seconds later. And what site is accessed approximately 12 seconds later? Um, the next uh, page viewed is entitled How to How Two Patients with Toxic Alcohol Ingestions Typically Present. <coughs> now that site was accessed at 6, 18, colon 20 a.m.? Correct. And there's nothing about turning the, or is there anything about turning the computer on on December 17th that's gonna alter the accuracy at date and time? No. Judge, I again object to these, this line of questioning as beyond the scope of cross as being cumulative and there is no issue about the timing of these, uh, of these internet sites. We don't dispute that at all. Well, Your Honor, that's not the impression I got from Cross. Uh, I would say, no, you don't have to talk. Uh, the objections overruled on the first and second counts. On the third count, I, I would say that uh, if you want to offer a stipulation to the state, uh, it'll be a question whether he wants to accept it or not. But otherwise, it strikes me as being in contest in the case. Yeah, the, 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 well, I can talk to him about it, sure. Go ahead.
If you don't want to pick it, uh, well, I'm, I'm willing to consider, but and you know, save us a lot of time to do that. But right. I'd like a few minutes to talk to council about it. So I would request a short recess. Uh, short recess, folks. Please don't talk about the case.